Like this. Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, De Fosse yep. is, comes from Argentina. Actually, he traveled 30 hours to come here. <laughs> and thank you very much for that. <laughs> and he's the coordinator of Sci the SciPy conference. Argentina. Very yeah, in, in Argentina. And actually, he is also a teacher in. Um, uh, in San Bosco University, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and teaches the subject of operating system, which is the exam I will have <laughs> to give tomorrow. <laughs> and yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. <laughs> it's my first talk at, in English, so excuse me if I, I have a rusty language. <laughs> well, this is... Um, this title, it's actually pretty big for the stuff we have done, or we, or we are doing. Uh, but it's about this, this thing of real-time web for controlling systems. Yep. Um, which kind of systems? Well, before I get into there, uh, who am I? Well, I've already been introduced. I work at the university and uh, at Maginellis, a company that embraced Python, mostly in Argentina. Um, well, I will talk about the SMVE project that uh, in Spanish is like something like Electrical Values Measure System. Yep. Um, we attempt to build a UI uh, in this kind of, of systems. It's called HMI, Human Machine Interface, uh, for a power substation monitoring. Yep. A power substation is something like this. Uh, where you have the, the power lines that come from the generators, whatever they are, and uh, you distribute it to the city or uh, a big consumer. And HMI are these kind of things. This is taken not from my system, but from PV control. It's a cute application. Well, it, and they just try to mimic what the system does, and um, every time something changes, some blinks or uh, change its color or whatever. Well, Python really. Uh, well, Python is a um, very high level language for this kind of task. People prefer um, C or Assembler or Windows. <laughs> very proprietary things like, um, I don't know, comb uh, objects or, or stuff like that. I think it's related with the, how these things evolve. They, they came from a uh, very proprietary ecosystem. But I think that we think that Python is a great tool for this job because it has a lot of uh, libraries that allow you to uh, do uh, really neat stuff. Well, and we were not the first. This book, actually, is um, it's from O'Reilly. It's a great book. It, on, it covers the low-level stuff from the RS4 845, I will talk later, on the development cycle, you have to, s it, just, it just suggests, because sometimes the requirements change and with, you have to deal with ha hardware instead of software. Uh, it's easier because hardware don't, doesn't think up to now, but sometimes the engineers around it make, I don't know, silly decisions. Why Django? Well, uh, I don't have a big argument about why did I choose it? I, I, I knew it and I tried to use it and it fit. It has uh, settings with embedded logging that was uh, pretty neat for the task. It has comments, yeah, and it has uh, an easy to learn ORM. Where do the data come from? Well, this is one of the boards that takes data out of the, the power station. Actually, it's not the one that takes, but the one which stores uh, measures from smaller devices. Yep. Uh, it's from microchip. And why did we choose this? It's because in Argentina we don't have uh, high availab availability of open hardware like such Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone or that kind of stuff. We'd love to use them. <laughs> they are expensive or sometimes uh, hard to get. Well, this is one of the devices we take data from. Okay. They, uh, 
are really proprietary. They are from ABB or Alcom, the company that built them. And they have some pins inside that we have to reverse engineer <laughs> to take data from out of them. They wouldn't even thought about changing this stuff because they trust this hardware. So we have to, to uh, reverse engineer. And it was pretty easy because every time uh, some power is delivered, it, like it's open and uh, shorts and open a circuit, it was easy. Um, and we have to, to install something there. We call it IED. It comes from a international norm uh, standard called IEC, I don't know, remember the name, but uh, the thing is that they ha we have uh, the hardware and this hardware have no communication or one-to-one -one communication and we needed a network. So we built this, this uh, little device, it's a microcontroller that takes digital inputs, analog inputs and events. In this case, every time, every 15 minutes, it sends uh, an it gives you samples that you, can, you have to measure and you have the amount of power you have delivered or consumed. We had uh, to make a network of them, so we built a very basic, uh, we took this decision. We made very little devices that were put inside this, this box. Yes, it has a space for a daughter board and we used it. And we use a very, very, very simple uh, microcontroller. It has like 1K of RAM <laughs> and 8-bit processor, uh, 4 megahertz. So it was <laughs> very, very simple. And um, we needed to concentrate information somewhere uh, in case we don't have the TCP and all the computers running for some reason, I don't know, deploying or something. So uh, the concentrator was the board I showed you a few slides before, and it's um, basically a big one that reads some values, some digital inputs, but its main task is to store the data these devices provide. It pulls every five seconds. It's configurable, but now it's five seconds. So it sends a message, okay, what's the what's 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 the news or what are the, the values that change they respond and this concentrator store that data that data and then it's sent back when somewhere uh, in the upper network asks um sorry i went back when well, concentrator have also other responsibilities like um well synchronize the clock where a GPS, a GPS not only gives uh, geographical information about the, uh, the, the place, but also um, very precise timing. You have like uh, a pulse that takes like a second and it has a microsecond of, um, of resolution. So if, you, if your hardware can keep to that timing, you have a very precise uh, event timing and it's very important in electrical uh, system because when something goes wrong they use that events to say to, to to tell who is the one who has to pay the, ha the broken hardware so it's it's one of the requirements very high precision timing yep well um, another responsibility is to publish this um, IDE, IDE's information uh, to a TCP network, yeah? Take some status variables and communication, well. well what is a SCADA daemon? Well, it's the process that has to pull every five seconds this big one, this big uh, board, and take the data it took from the, the ID and store it somewhere. Um, it talks to the concentrators, concentrators using Twisted. Um, I know there are nicer approach to <laughs> network with, with Python, uh, but Twisted did the work well and we, we used it. I know some code doesn't look like uh, Pythonic, but it worked. 
we talk to the database using Django models. That's, this is the first place where we will see Django, okay? So uh, these values that we have in the, in the IEDs are stored in the end in Django models, yep. And this, is, this task is performed with a Django management command, yep. Uh, the models mimic the hardware. So we have a concentrator, and an IED, many IEDs for every concentrator, and each IED has DIs, IEs, uh, digital analogs, and events. This is a, a drawing about what is going on when you pull. Yep, this is the Django common. Uh, this is a two-wire link, and using this protocol we made up called Mara, it tried to optimize every byte possible, <laughs> so it's highly optimized. Maybe in the future we will use some more user-friendly protocol like the Internet of Things protocol or, or something more readable. But now we, we use a very specific protocol, but it's open. The, although some stuff here is not open. <laughs> Uh, well, and every, this concentrator pulls for data, stores, and then the, the daemon takes data and stores it in Postgres. I like Postgres a lot. <laughs> it saved my life many times. Uh, but how do we do it? Okay, we have frames, yes. These are the smallest. Uh, the, every package is, uh, has this structure. It has a start of frame, uh, bytes saying how many bytes come after them, after it, uh, destination source, a sequence number, a command, yep, and a payload. A command might or might not have a payload, yep, and the payload typically has status variables, DIs, IEs, events, and a CRC at the end. With constructs for parsing, uh, it, it was one of the more specific and great tools we have in the project because it allows us to, to change the protocol definition very easily. We don't have to, 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 to type it in code. You, we don't have to use for four loops uh, to define the structure of our protocol. Yep. So for the example I showed, uh, uh, the, this smart frame has two methods. It's a Python object. One of, this me of its methods builds from a dictionary, the byte representation, and if you, if you use another method called parse, to, takes the, the, the string, the bytes, and uh, pops out a dictionary. It's a really, really neat tool. Well, let's go back to the real-time thing. Uh, we saw the SCADA daemon. So, the SCADA daemon somehow creates updates or, or changes information in the database. How do we uh, take those, that, those changes into uh, somewhere else? Uh, detecting model changes are relatively easy using Shango signals. You can uh, plug signals when something changes in a, in, in a table, after all and you execute, execute, execute uh, whichever code you, you want. Um, but we have a, an issue here that the SCADA daemon runs in a different process, so a different other space than the web server or whatever process we have. So we, have, we need some kind of inter-process communication. We have the updates coming up from the SCADA daemon, but we have the web server and the, the we will see later, the, the socket server running in, in different process. So, ZeroMQ comes to the game, and ZeroMQ has um, many communication patterns, uh, and we need some kind of publisher-subscriber pattern between processes. Yep. Well, specifically, it's a ZeroMQ for World, where you have uh, many publishers that send information to a subscriber in this end of the for World, and every change is sent to some subscriber. When you send a message, you put a topic, so you can put labels to every message. So a subscriber may be, may be listening on a specific topic. Uh, for example, I want to know when uh, IE changed or something, and this one may be listening to events. Yep, 
So it's very convenient for this particular case. Well, how do we do IPC with CRMQ? We have the, the POL process that takes data from the, the hardware, the models, the pre and post save signals, and the publisher that sends the data to this process that sends the data to whatever uh, process subscribes to it. In this case, it's a very simplified drawing. We have like a SOCJS, i talk about it later. But basically, this is the way we used web sockets. Well, how, do you, how did we show the data in the web? We need di diagrams. Uh, diagrams are drawings that, well, the thing is that the users are not computer friendly, I mean. They are like, they are engineers or, or they don't, they need a, a quick overview and without many information. I mean, like, it's not, uh, it doesn't fit their brain to see a table. <laughs> they need something graphical. Yep. So we need these this, this drawings. Well, uh, when we were, we were researching, SVG was the, appeared to be the, the, the better tool for this because it's open and it's supported in many mature browsers and, and mid and high end mobile devices. Well, and it provides a dome, uh, properties and IADs. You have a shapeware SVG for web developers. That's a neat thing to have. An example diagram is, is this. The color of each lines represents the voltage. It's like high voltage and lower voltage. Uh, in this case, we have like a circuit breaker. We, ha we have some measures, uh, like the, the current, the power. Um, this is a small piece of the diagram. I can show, I can't show everything because this thing <laughs> shows the uh, information that I sh I'm not able to, <laughs> to publish. But the thing is, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to draw these things with Inkscape, which is an SVG editor, and it's open source, and it's uh, very good for this, because you have, you draw one of these patterns, you see that pattern repeats every time in the screen, and you can copy and paste, and then group them, and give them a property. For example, this is called a power line for thir uh, 33 kilovolts. The yellow one is for 13 kilovolts. But there was um, something that the, the guys require, the, the engineers, that was configuration should not need a DevOps. Uh, we don't need a developer for changing these diagrams or how they uh, represent what the hardware is telling. Well, how do we dynamize SVG? Uh, I don't remember what I put in this slide. Well, the it's uh, do, do not directly change properties in diagrams. Sometimes you need two, three, or more, or even six inputs to know the color of if it blinks or if it's not um, in in one in, in, in each part of the of the picture. So we had to associate a model to every SVG element in the screen. Every time something changes, a formula gets recalculated. So, this is the final picture. Uh, we have the concentrators, the IEDs that are pulled by the concentrator, the SCADIA daemon that takes data out of the concentrator, the Shango models in this process space, and which signals are sent to the, this forwarder. The forwarder takes the updates the updates are calculated, the formulas. I, I don't have one in the slide, but I think, oh, it's not my computer. But <laughs> the requirements are, uh, I don't have user stories. We don't have user stories. We have Excel files. So everything is <laughs> designed in Excel files. So we have like formulas from Excel. <laughs> I, I don't know, the engineers love Excel. I, I, I can change the way they think. I, the, it's un we took the, the you, we use um, pi parsing to take those Excel formulas from there 
spreadsheets and put it in a model and use them to calculate how every of these uh, 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 every diagram oh uh, i don't know how, i don't know where i oh it's not my computer sorry <laughs> uh well this picture i showed you uh okay now uh, this one i want that yep yeah well that that picture i showed you so every every piece here has a formula Sometimes more than a formula. Just a click. Just a click. The presentation tool is not working, not cooperating. Yeah. But it should. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it hangs. <laughs> this is something that we don't accept in this kind of software. <laughs> but this tool is not used for, for the, the the project. So. Uh, for example, these, um, these squares that we see here represent the state of this uh, circuit breaker. Sometimes circuit breakers open because of uh, power exceeding some level, and it's, uh, it's built in the hardware. Uh, it, you can change that, but you have to know if it's open. It, the, the, the opening was made by... talking about someone working this has to be very accurate because you can send someone to do some maintenance and if the diam doesn't show you can kill someone and they don't want to kill anybody because they are, it's very expensive to kill someone and in the end that's the, what the company is <laughs> um, well and for the, well what, this is the final picture so we have the formulas. The formulas are, uh, send updates to the same for Warder because we have these things called topics. So every time uh, I send a message, I say, OK, this is a, a property going to the web, or this is a, a, a raw value taken from the model of, that came from the hardware. So uh, this, this is a, there is a Socket.js server. Why did we choose Socket.js <coughs> over WebSockets? Basically because web Socket.js mimics the WebSocket API, but works in many browsers, much more than WebSockets do. WebSockets uh, are a great thing, but they, um, have, they had some specification changes, so browsers are still getting it right. And sometimes we need this to work in IE, and it's a nightmare <laughs> because when you have like thousands of lines of JavaScript, it's, it's not IE friendly, at least with I, old IEs. Well, this, uh, this is a shocker server. It basically uh, sends the message to the web browser, and we have a SVG file there. And here is the Django application. It's a very little square here because it has no, it provides the models and the signers, but nothing else. Actually, I, when we started this project, it was. Um, Flask and SQL Alchemy, but as we started to need, as we needed an admin and something out of the box to change things fast or to parse as stuff, and the we were getting too much boilerplate code, um, and we don't have we didn't have time to make things the way we wanted. So Django resolved some of this stuff. What's in the future? Well. In the future, we have this idea of SCADA as a service. Yep. Using this pattern, we can, using open hardware like Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone, uh, sell or, or, or release the service, yes. And using a VPN to communicate with hardware, we can publish in the web a SCADA application. Well, use open hardware is one of the things we are doing right now. Uh, generalized interaction, some things are a little bit mm, not, not easy to, to, uh, to, to use by an uh, uh, average user. And we want to use SVG Edit, with, which is um, an online uh, web uh, application to draw SVG. And it's really good. It's a jQuery 
based error and so we, we all the workflow yeah will do will be done in the web and uh, I think I, that's all I don't have VPN connection to show you but I will tweet it later so you can be show, see the, the system well actually it'll take some days because I must fly back to Argentina but uh, I know that I have um, covered a lot of stuff I didn't I didn't want to go too much into detail, just to give an overview about how we can put these technologies together and uh, like uh, have a different approach to uh, something different like than a web application. Yes, uh, this web application doesn't uh, take data from the user, rather than it's use, it uses hardware. So, well, questions? Yep. Yeah. Okay. On the SCADA pool elements, um, have you think about salary, a salary task? Because you have, uh, oh, sorry. Um, have you think to apply um, salary task manager instead of the SCADA, because I think the, uh, that element is uh, written by hand. Using the salary task manager, you can uh, expose some API using Flower, so you can test all the, if all the concentrators works well, and uh, you can also use the map function to um, apply par, uh, um, parallel uh, data acquisition from the concentrator. Well, uh, the moment I checked salary, version 3 was coming up, so there was some revolt going on <laughs> because the API changed a lot, but I know salary fits well here. I ha have to see how do we put some logic because the IEDs or the concentrator are not that dumb as I describe it. They have some uh, recheck if the message went r wrong or the CRC because they have very li little memory even the concentrator has little memory because if this this link goes down for a day for example you need that information in a, that information is, is crucial you have to, to have that so when the connection goes back uh, working uh, you have to pull them in a different way but I will try it and, and uh, maybe that would generalize a little this thing made by hand by him. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, my question is actually related. Um, I was wondering how you deal with the possibility of failover. Let's say your polling system crashes, your concentrators aren't pulled, they aren't flushed, uh, there's probably a limit in their internal memory. How are you going to deal with uh, possible packet loss or uh, data corruption? Uh, every time uh, the, we have a protocol here, um, the picture about the frames sh just showed you the, the schema, the, the, the byte position. But we have also a protocol that has CRC sequence number. So if I don't receive the correct sequence number, I pull again. Uh, so we have some, uh, some kind of, of, of uh, assurance. Yeah. We, the, uh, this kind of system have some uh, thing called passive uh, monitoring. So it, it's a guy with a cell phone, and <laughs> when something goes very bad, the system knows beforehand and will send a message because we don't have artificial intelligence or anything like that. If something is going really bad, you will receive an email or a message using this same the same IPC. You can connect something here, and if so, 
okay, this is an alarm message. Let's send a mess, an SMS or something. Hi. Uh, just um, curious, which is uh, the, uh, let's say, latency from uh, electrical signal from EAD to at least the web app? Or um, the latency? Yeah. yeah, through all the pipeline, at least. Through, uh, yeah. through all the pipeline, like uh, from 25 to 150 milliseconds. So it's pretty, uh, I don't, this web application doesn't run, uh, they have specific networks and they, they divide it with VLANs. Uh, they have this thing that they must know the hardware very well. Uh, in uh, w this application also has, this web view we have also goes to cell phones. Cell phones have higher latency. I don't know if it's related with the processor power or the network. CRMQ, it's really, really fast. Actually, it powers IPython. When you have two, the same kernel and two views, you have the, for example, you open in a console and then in a Qt view. Uh, it's really fast. RabbitMQ, which is a similar uh, thing, has not that performance, but it has more reliability. Re <laughs> well, it's more reliable. Um, in our case, things we have, uh, we have specific specs for hardware and performance. Um, CERN Q was, was easy and it, the Python API, it's great. It feels really Pythonic to work with CERN Q. Okay, I have a question for now. It's, uh, you used Z Z ZMQ for Warder. Uh, yep. you, it was required for some reason? We used it because uh, I, it's, it, would, it was not a requirement. We needed something to, to pass messages through processes. Uh, the forwarder was used because we needed uh, for one publisher, yeah, we needed more than one subscriber. For example, the, the previous question about the SMS or the what happens? Well, some messages, for example, error messages are uh, listened by uh, an email server or SMS uh, device, and they, uh, there are many, many subscribers for one, for one message. Uh, that's, that's the reason. And there are many publishers, and they use the same channel. And I know this is a better parallel. Uh, yeah, you could. You could connect everybody with everybody. It's more mess, but probably faster. Yes. I would like to know what is the rate of messages per second? Because I'm doing really similar thing, and uh, what, you have, what is the rate of messages per second? Do you have more or less? Uh, no, it's very, very low. Very low. Okay, the, so then for water, it's okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, okay. It's not a bottleneck. Right now, this uh, service will be used for many... Uh, we, maybe we will hit some performance in the future, because this this, this idea of the SCADA as a service, uh, we'll, we will be trying to implement it in many cities with the, the power distributor and for different things. So SDG lets you ra drive, uh, write, uh, show anything as you have squares, circles, a water pump, or I don't know. Okay, one more question. Um, well, I have, actually, I have to. Uh, one of the things, right now you're just monitoring, right? You're not sending directly comments also. We support sending comments. They don't want them. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, uh, uh, they don't want them because they are not prepared. Uh, as we show in the, ver the very first picture, these, um, these devices are very old. Oh, I don't know why that, it doesn't follow, but the, the, the apparatus, we have in... Well, there are at least digital yes. already. So this is 10 years old mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So using control, even though we can uh, use, you can, we can send messages, uh, they are not, um, they're, they're, they don't have the, the ability to, to, to use them. 
right now? No, I'm saying uh, right now you're just monitoring those devices there. But I was thinking that if it has more things, if you have more devices, different devices also, because uh, as you were saying now also that one example could be like water pumps and this and that. So at the end you end up writing drivers for each and every one of them, which are drivers also that you have to support there. So the other question is there is that isn't there like usually in industry you have like uh, providers already that give you PLCs already so that you can connect to them, you have an Ethercat bus, so we have everything is we haven't reached that goal yet, but we have to interact with some Modbus. Uh, yeah. hardware. We have the twisted driver for Modbus. We have tested and it works. I don't know how reliable it is. And uh, we have an DNP3 that it's an open protocol for sending data uh, to hardware or from, or from hardware. And the, um, we have considered that and what we will have is a different model for them. We have to, to uh, the, the, the demon that pulls every time will store in different models. That must be customized for every protocol. Yeah. I'm saying that because where I work, we went through the same thing. And one of them is also Modbus. You need to have a driver at Modbus, and then you have to write your own models like for the different hardware. Say yes. an Adam, or when you want to interact with a Lakeshore, or whatever, you have to write. Yes, you have, to, you have to write the, 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 the customs for every need the custom drivers and the custom models, the data representation. But after all, if you can synthesize the, the coloring in a formula, uh, you end up in the same output. I mean, it's like the formula is the, the, the barrier between the low level and what the user sees or wants to modify. Yes. We yes. Uh, we've seen that. Yes. And for that case, we have seen that uh, Mango M2M, it's a Java application that does the thing, the, the, and it has uh, built in many protocols. Uh, if I had to, uh, to talk to many devices, many kind of devices, I would use that piece of hardware for the, that acquisition and, and try to, to do the formula, the formula calculation and the graphics with that CC and web sockets for the updates. Basically, the answer I would replace the SCADA. <laughs> Thanks for interesting talk. Uh, the question is, is it correct that uh, you send uh, the whole set of data to the browser even uh, if nothing is changed actually? No, you don't uh, send, you just send updates. Okay, uh, then uh, if you just send updates, uh, what if I will uh, switch off the SCADA daemon and just will uh, look at the web app? One, it won't change. It won't change because I mean the initial state, if it is shut down and then I run the application, then I will see nothing or? If you shut down the SCADA. Yep. And you so there will be no updates? No and updates. I, and I need uh, an initial state, how do you uh, get it? The initial state is taken from the database. So, oh. the, uh, yeah, but you need formulas, right? Yes. Uh, so, so, so you use formulas also from the web app? Yes. To yes. build the initial state. Oh, okay. I should have moved this a little bit up because uh, the formulas, the, the value that is calculated, it's stored. So if someone needs some fr fresh start, you can use this store value and then recalculate it again. Sorry? Yes, every, every update has a timestamp. Uh, so if it's very old, uh, there are many, uh, there are many checks that I haven't met that take, uh, for example, the, the coloring takes that data. For example, if I don't have information about this 
uh, this ID that, that then sends the information for this bar, it, that bar will change its color because I, don't ha I, don't, I am not sure about what is going on. And uh, the this thing will change its color to uh, gray, so it's tall, and you don't have any certainties about what is going on. Uh, I, I don't decide that because there are these electronic engineers that use Excel and they give me the file and okay, do the, you do your thing. <laughs> and, uh, when it goes down, you send the guy with the cell phone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, does your uh, company uh, power uh, telecom uh, operators that send uh, the messages? How do I? Uh, sorry. So, do, do, <laughs> does your company uh, uh, provide power to the telecommunication uh, pr uh, companies? No. <laughs> because in that case, you never get the SMS that your system no. is down. <laughs> <laughs> they have like this. Um, Yes, they have like a wagon full of generators. Uh, we have some, some issues there because people in Argentina is very reluctant to, to, uh, to antennas because they say that they, it, pro it produces uh, illnesses and uh, we have very low covering for HDSPI or 3G or whatever, high speed, but for SMS it works. and have a lunch. Thank you.